Hi, thank you all for being here today. What a great audience. Welcome to the Raptor Center Bird Kitchen Edition. Today we're going to be making something very special. We are going to be making and then dissecting owl pellets. Oh. Oh. Now, I know what you're thinking. You've never made an owl pellet before. Understandable, most of us haven't. But I'm here to tell you, it's very easy to learn how to make and dissect an owl pellet on your own. So, you might be wondering, what is an owl pellet? Well, that's easy. Owl pellets are just the undigestible remains of any food that an owl may have consumed. So they eat a delicious mouse, for example. They eat the whole thing. It goes down into their stomach. Their digestive juices and enzymes work very hard, digesting all of the meat and the organs and all of the kind of good parts of that mouse. The only thing their stomachs are not capable of digesting are the bones and the fur. All of that gets wrapped up into a nice little compact pellet, and then bleh, oh. up it comes. We call it casting a pellet. So, after about to 8 to 12 hours after eating, you go from having a nice whole mouse to a nice whole owl pellet. Ah. So that's what we're going to be working on today. We're going to be looking at an inside look into what's all in that owl pellet and how you can figure out what an owl might have been eating the day before. So we have a few materials that we need to go through. We have, of course, gloves for safety. We have tweezers and we have forceps. We, of course, have our trusty magnifying glass. We also are going to want some pieces of paper or paper towels or paper plates, something that you can use to make a nice surface, keep everything nice and together. And of course, our bone guide, where we'll be able to use this to figure out what our owl was eating. Oh, of course, I also have a whole dead mouse. Very important ingredient. And there's one more thing I'm missing. What could it be? Got it. An owl. I'll be right back. So we have our great horned owl and our whole dead mouse. So now we're ready to get cooking. You ready? All right. Down the hatch. Oh. Still working on the tail, down the hatch. And now we wait. That food is gonna go down into her stomach. It's gonna take, again, about eight to 12 hours, somewhere in there, for it to fully digest and form that pellet. She will cast up that pellet, and then we're ready to dissect it. So, now we wait. Well, now that we fed our owl a mouse, gonna need to wait about eight to 12 hours until it's ready to go, so find Something to do. They're done! So, not just that one great horned owl was fed yesterday, so I have multiple pellets for us to look through. Again, we have our gloves on, we have our table all ready to go. Let's take a look. So let's start with this nice, big, great horned owl pellet. I'm gonna just start by breaking it apart a little bit with my hands, but you can see how all that fur is kind of compacted over the bones. Already, as I pull it apart, you can see that there are some pretty big bones and it looks like a couple of pieces of rocks in there that might have gotten stuck on their food. Now, this is one of my favorite things to see in a pellet that I'm going to dissect. And that is a skull. This is kind of like looking at a rat head from above, right? This is where the eyes would be, kind of facing here on the sides. And these big cheekbones are kind of over where these big muscles would connect. These right here are its front teeth. Do you see that? These front teeth, I'll pull them out in a little bit. But these are its front incisors, so those big teeth that you see on rodents that they're really good at chewing things with. If we rotate it to look at the bottom, 
You can see where its molars are. See those nice big flat teeth? These are like the teeth in the back of your mouth that are really flat that we use for chewing. That's what these teeth are for. And then in, in the back where the brain would have been, it's all empty. It's been broken into. I'm gonna use my forceps here because there's a little bit of fluff inside of here and I'm wondering, there's a really big bone in here too. This is, it's called the auditory bulla, or the plural is auditory bulle. But basically it means that this is the part of a skull that houses all the stuff that mammals use for hearing. This rat would have used its hearing a lot, so it has a really big area of its skull dedicated to hearing things. I think skulls are really cool, but this is what it looks like underneath. And then I'll see if I can pull this out. So remember, this is kind of where the eyes would be. And this is the front of its face. So this is kind of where its nose would be. And these teeth come down into its mouth. Well, so here are these teeth. For rodents, their teeth grow really long. Do you see how that comes out of there? So they have these really long front teeth because rodents are always chewing. Okay, what else is in here? We found the skull. We found an auditory bulla, which is cool. What else do we have in here? Ooh, I think we found part of the jaw. Yes, we did. Covered in some fur. So here we have a jaw bone that we found in here. You can see here that tooth. I'll see if I can pull it out, but it actually goes, this front incisor, this front tooth that's gonna cut through things, goes all the way back here. I'll see if I can pull it out, you ready? There it is. That's how long that tooth is compared to the jawbone. Ooh, this looks like it might be from, this might be the scapula or kind of that shoulder blade. Yeah, I think that's what this is. If we look at our handy dandy guide, I think that's this. Yeah. Lots of ribs. I can see a bunch of different ribs. Ribs, ribs, ribs. More ribs. So this is a vertebra. So this is, if you feel the back, kind of your back down from the top of your neck, you'll feel all those little bumps. Those are the kind of bones of your spine or your vertebrae. You just have a whole nice big chain of them. And this hole in the middle here is what those vertebrae are really protecting. That's your spinal cord. That's all of the kind of electrical wiring of your body that's connecting your brain to the rest of your body. So you have different shapes of vertebra for different parts of your body. Oh, I found something big. Ooh. Oh, is this the back of the skull? Yes, it is. We're missing one part out of the top, but you can see this big hole out of the back. This is where all of that big important information comes out. So this is where when your brain that's housed in here is talking to the rest of your body, all those signals, they come out through this big hole here. Pretty cool. All right, here is that owl pellet from Whisper, the barn owl that I watched her cast the other day. I had thought that this was a mouse tail at first, but it turns out that this is just a feather. So right away, I see one really big, cool bone. This was probably part of the pelvis. It's got this really deep, big, deep socket in here for like a hip. Ooh, here is a nice big long bone, the femur. But this is kind of the idea of how a hip joint works is there's a big round ball joint and then a big socket joint and they fit together and that's how you're able to rotate around. So if you move your leg around, you're rotating a big ball joint inside of a socket joint. And then we have, this is kind of like your shin bone. It's down here, we connect to the feet. So there's probably all these little bones down here some of these are probably little feet bones. I think we'll call that good for this owl pelt. We'll look at one more. Now, sometimes people ask me, why do we only talk about owl pellets? Do other birds make pellets? And other raptors do make pellets. They uh, make pellets, but their stomachs are so acidic and strong that our daytime or diurnal raptors are able to actually digest bones. So this is a pellet from a red-tailed hawk. And if I open it up, there are no bones. It's just all fur or feathers. 
So that's why people don't talk a lot about other birds' pellets. But other raptors, like our eagles and our hawks and our falcons, our osprey and our vultures, they also make pellets. They just are able to digest the bones. So there we have it. Those are our owl pellets. Well, thank you folks for joining me here in the Raptor Center's bird kitchen. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make your own and dissect your own owl pellets. If you are not able to produce your own owl pellets, store-bought is fine. In fact, there are many places where you can actually purchase owl pellets to support uh, wildlife rehab centers or other organizations. Once the Raptor Center is back open, we actually do sell owl pellets that are produced by the owls that live right here. So sometime you should check it out. On the other hand, you can also look out and about out in the wild right now to try to figure out where owls live. One of the best ways to figure out where an owl is nesting near you is to actually look on the ground and be looking for some small piles of owl pellets. Just make sure you're not disturbing any nesting sites. Thank you all again. Have a wonderful time learning and experimenting on your own. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>